it's been a wonderful session since morning and uh, i can understand post lunch sessions are really difficult because you have to keep yourself awake after a yummy lunch before i start with the panel topics i just want to recapitulate what we had been doing since morning in this in this room so dr nahla al kasmi talked about entrepreneurship mentoring starting from home his excellency uh, arifa al falahi she talked about the history of women in uae and the difficult lifestyle they used to have and how they broke those biases and came forward definitely the rulers of uae believed in education of women and all this was uh, enabled because of those thoughts then we saw a product launch a successful lady and a support behind that successful lady when and i love the moment when dr musa asked a question from the husband of that lady and and he only said she can do wonders and she, i'm sure she's going to be wonderful uh, lifelong so i really like that but i will come to the related point that i would like to discuss then his excellency leila al atfani she talked about we all have in uae what is called the enabling environment this environment the enabling environment we don't tend to find in our countries developing countries like pakistan india bangladesh africa <clears throat> we don't really find these kind of environment there uae is a really blessed country that right from the very beginning they have been thinking about it they have been empowering their women then sana sana was a was an interesting speaker she talked about having a digital footprint or handprint and the importance of having it even for people who are very successful in these days then we had an engineer in front of uh, amongst us the aircraft engineer and she talked about judgments and the biases when we see a person as a man and a woman there is a there is a deemed bias so we start talking with a salutation mr or miss that's a bias that's that we create these gender judgments they do create problems because they define our behaviors towards other human being when i was told the topic about a panel discussion i initially i said it's a very difficult topic to discuss because normally in women events we talk about women empowerment women achievements etc this is the topic which is talking about the other side of what happens which is how men can be allies better allies with women to talk about on this topic uh, it's my pleasure to invite my panelist miss uh, pega goal first of all pleasure to have you on the stage <laughs> sheikha abdullah al noemi it will be a pleasure to have you there and dima najim i would like to start from uh, sheikha abdullah al noemi she is the executive director Co commercial operations ajman free zone and an entrepreneur within the ajman free zone sheikha has crossed various departments and she has worked over the last years to eventually become a executive director of commercial operations sheikha is in charge of four key departments marketing and communications sales customer happiness and development services sheikha is responsible for defining and managing the ajman free zones brand she is tasked with targeting potential customers and attracting them to be part of the free zone ecosystem sheikha ensures that business service standards are met while afz community are given the required guidance and support lastly sheikha oversees day to day affairs of the developmental services which is tasked with collaborating with both private and public sector to ensure customer happiness she has received many awards and recognition for her with the ajman free zone uh, which includes project manager award which was awarded to her by his highness sheikh Humaid bin Rashid Al Noemi Supreme Council member and ruler of Ajman she has also been awarded with the Middle East Awards future leader in free zone industry 2020 she is also an experienced assessor across a number of government and private awards in UAE 
She holds a bachelor's degree in computer science from Ajman University and master's in Dubai uh, business administration in HR and department from the Canadian University of Dubai. She is a graduate of 2018 Ajman leadership program as well. Welcome to the panel. We have uh, sitting with Shekha, Ms. Pega Gol. She is the author of best-selling book called The Formula, which I saw in her hand and I'm very interested in reading it. And she's going to tell more about what she has written in it. She is the founder and CEO of Glasswing Consulting, international partner and member of Global Women Leaders Committee of World Business Angels Investment Forum. She is a C-suite executive branding advisor and a podcast and talk show host. Lastly, we have Ms. Dima. Ms. Dima Najim, she is the managing director of uh, EFE in UAE. She has over 17 years of experience working in MENA region in senior NGO roles. Prior to joining EFE, she has served as part of Emirates Nature uh, fundraising team. Before moving to UAE, she held the position of Chief Operations Officer of Relief International in Iraq and in 2010 was part of team assigned by AG Fund to establish the first microfinance bank in Syria, where she assumed the role of operations manager. Dima has significant com professional experience in women and youth empowerment, financial inclusion, in addition to her experience in partnership management, fundraising and operations management of NGO, Dima has a BA in economy and master's degree in finance. A little bit about myself, which I totally forgot. <laughs> I am a finance professional. I am serving as a finance director of a local conglomerate in UAE. It's been 20 years in the field of finance, breaking the glass ceiling at every front. Each year, I face challenge. I am a Pakistani national, Belongs. Uh, I had been raised and brought up in Karachi all my life. It's been 16 years living in UAE. I do a small work uh, in terms of volunteering for women related causes. I had the opportunity of co-authoring a book called She Dares, which is just there in the market. That's a small introduction. Thank you very much. And we will start our panel discussion now. Behind every strong woman is a story which gives her no other choice. So so, so that's, that's a statement I believe in. Okay. So how men can be better allies? I would first like to start with Shekha. So since we all belong to the corporate environment, if you can please enlighten us uh, living in a very... A blessed country and having an enabling environment. How, what kind of examples you have seen earlier and uh, how men can be better allies with women on this front, please. Uh, first of all, um, I'm happy to be part of this, uh, Asma, and thank you for the introduction you given. Um, as you mentioned, uh, we're really proud being in this country which has a strategy uh, behind empowering women and an agenda behind empowering women. So it's, it's, it's not a file or a message that is saying in media, but it's in numbers. Uh, my colleagues has mentioned some numbers in their talk. Uh, for example, um, the World Economic Forum uh, has announced the gender uh, gaps reports in 2020, and the UAE was one of the region's best performing, which we got 65.5% uh, overall uh, overcoming these gaps. So uh, when there is a plan in, in, in a country and you are uh, part of it, either you are born and raised here or, or you are a local or even a foreigner in, in this country, you find that uh, you are not alone. There is a certain agenda that drives your path. It's just need a belief from yourself, knowing yourself and your abilities. So this is something that make us um, always um, when I give back to the society, when I give back to our leaders and, and to our family, that when they believe in us, we are there and we are the correct place which they believe in. Taking back to the word which uh, Dr. Um, Engineer Suad has mentioned in her speech that woman empowerment is not something happens now when we are uh, in this age or we are in this, in this era. It's something that happens from our home since we were born or from our family. So it's either you are empowered since you are small or you face the challenges which makes you empower yourself. So there is always a reason coming back to the days in your childhood that makes you empowered. We just wanna, wanna ensure it and I always see it in, in, in uh, uh, women talks and even in, in gatherings, 
it's not always something that we need to, um, let's say, uh, prove it. It's something there. So we don't need to uh, put that that effort to prove for, for people that women can do it or uh, women are uh, must be pos positioned in a certain challenge. Uh, feminine touch must stay there. So it's okay to be pampered. It's okay to for men to do things. Uh, it's okay to give them their role to be alliance to us. So uh, we don't need just to say, hey, we can stand alone. I can say it, I'm single, not married. I don't, it's not a because of I can stand alone, but because I have a good support from my surrounding uh, as a man and as uh, my father, my brothers, my colleagues, my leaders. So that makes me uh, like um, um, giving them their role, let them support me and enjoy supporting that. So one of the examples that I would like to mention it, Asma, uh, coming from the home, uh, I have mentioned uh, that I'm an entrepreneur. So how I became an entrepreneur, it's not something I went and I fight for it or I went and do my search um, because I have that perfection attitude, which I always try to keep it aside, but it's, it's in touch with me. Uh, I went to a number of exhibitions with Chamber of Commerce in Ajman organized it. It's a franchise uh, exhibitions. So I go there and I try to select a ready business because I don't want to start from zero. Uh, I, I want to have it as a learning curve where others started uh, this business. So I went for the first round of the exhibition, the second round, and I didn't select. And my dad, he knows that I want to go and do that. And I like some of the speakers say, don't go and put your kids or your, your family members where you want them to be. Let them show their passion. Let them select what they want to be. So uh, I want to be in the, in the career of entrepreneurship and startups. So uh, I went first round, second round, and always my dad is asking which business you will select. And I didn't find the perfect business. In the third round of the exhibition, he, he went there and he signed an agreement with a franchise company. And he came to me and he said, your partner will be your brother to help you in your busy life because I... My working hours is still five, but five, my work starts. <laughs> so uh, I work till late night. Uh, I don't have time for my business. So he had put my brother as a partner in my business. And uh, he gave me the franchise contract to start. So I don't have any choice either to make it because, you know, we are as a female. We always want to show that we don't let things fail. So he knows the attitude is there and I will not say no for such an agreement. So I took it from there and now since eight years, I, I'm, I'm managing that business with the support definitely of all males surrounding me. I never find like someone trying to pull me down uh, when it comes to leaders, brothers, uh, UAE agenda, because they have programs for women, startups and entrepreneur, uh, either you are a local or a foreigner. So the, the, or the government supports that. Um, as uh, as uh, Musa mentioned, that uh, men are purchasers also, so <laughs> it's good. Uh, coming to maybe some will ask, what's my business? So it's a bakery, uh, but for your information, I don't know to bake anything, <laughs> anything. I don't know even to do an egg. Any. <laughs> so it's about managing the business itself, the learning curve behind the business, how to manage the human resource in the business. So this. This all gives you yourself to find yourself where you can stand and where you can move. So Alhamdulillah, we are in, in a country that really support and I really encourage anyone to do anything. Business, coaching, training, sharing knowledge. Uh, really, you can do something nice uh, in your society, in your family. Um, um, try to be the, the woman that supports women. This is a very important. We, we don't need to compete because I see it in, in, in the organizations. The competition makes them fail more than the support of, the, of, of men behind, behind that. So we need to support each other. I had a nice talk while having my, my lunch with the, the, the young ladies there. Um, they were talking about how they support each other and how they find opportunities for each other. This is a very important thing because in the society, some people try to pull you down saying, hey, you, you are always busy. There's a social um, gathering. You need to come, uh, watch your kids, go to your family. So because those people find that they reach the, the highest level 
that they would like to be there. So it's okay, be with them. Uh, my advice, join the social uh, gathering, join them. Um, you know, as a culture, we have to go to the weddings and all that to say, to, to be there. So it's okay, have it in your agenda. It's not all about development and work, but also uh, find yourself and your, your um, networking. Uh, really, I'm happy being here. I, find, I was very inspired today with all the, the, the achievements that is uh, shown here on the stage. So thank you, Asma, and I hope I, I, I covered your, uh, your nice topic. Yeah, thank it you. was wonderful to know um, real life experience and, and to know that men are really not just standing behind, but standing beside in, in each and every decision in, uh, as a support, as an initiative, because at times we all are human beings and at times we are down. We, you know, there are phases. Sometimes we are up, sometimes we are down. We, we need somebody who's standing beside us all the time, supporting. We can be good in times when we are low and we can be great in times when we are reaching our heights. Okay, coming to Pega. Okay, Pega, first of all, we would like to know a little bit about your book because that's, that's uh, you know, the curiosity is on the rise. Sure. And then please uh, tell us something about your thoughts on this topic. Sure. And thank you so much, Asma, for the nice introduction. Um, as you may know, my name is Pega Gol, and uh, I wrote this book because I was doing uh, 15 years of uh, headhunting and recruitment. And so I know in and out of the um, recruitment and job finding. So I found it really helpful to, to have it. And it was a calling for me because when I came to UAE, uh, 15 years ago, I didn't know how to find a job. And um, it, it was a very difficult experience for me. So in that moment, I promised myself to help every job seekers. Little I knew that <laughs> universe gonna take me to the path that I know in and out of recruitment so I can help everyone to how to find a job with, with this book, which is like a little investment, especially for someone who's jobless, who's just entering the market, doesn't know how to find a job, and at least they can, you know, um, with little investment, they can get a real, um, you know, real um, help from this book. And um, yeah, that's something I'm quite proud of. It's it, uh, eight times become number one bestseller on Amazon in 2020 and it was the year that everyone losing their job and I think that was the best thing that could happen in my life. Uh, thank you very much no for your thoughts. Okay, My question is basically again coming back to the topic. So how in your uh, experience with the corporate world and since you have become the CEO and founder of your company, how have you seen men actually becoming allies and, and, and uh, standing beside and, and helping with women empowerment? Yeah. First of all, I really like to um, ignite that as a woman, being in UAE was helping me a lot to improve. First of all, when I was doing recruitment and emeritization, um, I knew that there was an order to, uh, you know, uh, recruiting Emiratis for certain, uh, you know, organizations. And the most important part was that the emphasis on having male and female, both, you know? So it was nothing, no position only for male or only for female. So that was something that, you know, makes me feel confident that I get this, as um, Sheikha mentioned earlier, uh, it's not about only Emiratis, also expat, they get the same kind of treatment. So it makes me really proud. And also having an Emirati Women's Day, <laughs> you know, like uh, how, um, what, I don't know how many other countries they have the Women's Day only for their nationals, you know what I mean? So um, I don't know if we have, uh, you know, in any other countries, but here we have this to just make sure that we have the enough support for the, uh, for the uh, ladies. And um, the thing is, um, I really wanted first uh, to talk about how men can be the allies to help. But at the same time, I want to emphasize that it's, um, it's really also important to how us, how women, we, we see ourselves, you know? So it's easy to um, waiting for the help from others and saying that men, they have to do this, they have to do that, they have to help us. But also we should see it in ourselves. I'm gonna share my personal experience because 
um, it's <laughs> um, it's kind of difficult to see, but. 15 years ago, I look way younger than I am now. And when I was sitting in front of anyone, they just didn't take me serious. <laughs> you know, So it was a very difficult situation. Sometimes I had the CEOs, I met with the CEOs and they were like, I just asked my PA, who's this little girl once in my office? You know, So <laughs> they already arranged the time, but they didn't really, um, you know, uh, felt that, you know, I, I look younger than my age anyways. But because of that, I started to really um, become masculine because I wanted to fit in and I wanted to be accepted. So even my voice was changing, my, the way of like dressing was changing and everything because I felt that I want to fit in and I should be masculine to fit in. But it took me a few years to realize that as you empower yourself, as you understand and see yourself as a genderless, as who you are, doesn't matter how how uh, look, how do you look, where do you come from, what is your background, or um, even your uh, your sex is it your female or male, your ethnic, your um, race doesn't define you. So it's really important that how you see yourself and how you um, walk to the room with knowing that this is you, genderless, completely. And this is how I think. Uh, also men should see. So I'm sure all of you having a female in your life, either is your mother, your sister, your daughter, your wife. I'm sure any men in this room, they have one of these <laughs> a strong women in their life, you know? So just whenever you are in the corporate world, if you see um, them, as part of your family, if you see that you're helping your sister, if you see that you're helping your mother, you're helping your uh, daughter or helping your wife, that's, that's how things will change. You know, the change of the perception um, from both sides needs to happen. The genderless look. So when I'm talking to, um, to you, I'm seeing you as a soul, as who you are not your gender, not your look, not your background, nothing, you know? So this is something that I think if we practice, we can do. And within the 15 years of experience in recruitment and now four years in uh, being an entrepreneur, I certainly received lots of help from men that I didn't expect that. They were not even my family because I don't have brothers and I have only my dad and uh, he's not even here. So. Um, but I received uh, tremendous help from uh, my colleagues, my clients, and uh, I could see that it's not because um, of my gender. It was completely based on your, based on my abilities. That how I can deliver the um, the job that they require. Yeah, great thoughts. I think this is the key to to see each other as human beings and not just a man and a woman but we have a male panelist as well and he's gonna really counter you uh, as to what these thoughts are mr mustafa first of all thank you very much dr musa for giving me this opportunity um well you know this topic is is a wonderful topic and in the expo also you know a big session on on the, on the women's day was discussed on the breaking the bias in fact, you know, our, if we take an audit of the presence in the room, there are more women in the room than than the men. So, you know, this this is already done. Now, the proportion this, is out on the panel as well. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, uh, I, I'm I'm the odd kid in the block in the panel. So, see the the uh, Re industrial revolution 4.0 that bought a tremendous opportunity for women. Because, see, like, if I throw a question, if I take one position, what comes in your mind? A crane operator. What comes in your mind? Your, which comes as a macho man, you know, working very hard on, you know, operating the crane. <clears throat> if you go to Javilali port in the DP world, the cranes are operated by women with a joystick in the office, cozy environment, maybe in the Ajman port as well. So, you know, with this technology, you know, and and uh, and the things coming up, so it has become opportunities for the woman have opened tremendously. In fact, I say that the next you know coming years are are, are 
great opportunities for the women earlier you know there are certain positions which were only fit for the men as a as a legacy uh, you know uh, job description and and the, and uh, uh, what has been done in the hr but now no more in fact in any of the job uh, description requirement in any position if you remove the gender and select on the basis of their qualification i'm sure you will get more women into that position than men other day yes and uh, you know i i had an i was in one uh, event where his excellency uh, sohel uh, the minister of energy he was presenting and he says that in ministry of energy there are wo more women than men so you know this this shift has already and uae is a classic example of this in one of the uh, uh, event i was there uh, her highness uh, shekha lubna was present and she was the first lady cabinet minister in uh, in the uae government so you know and now you see how many there are many you know if you see so this already you know the biasness has reduced or rather it is the uh, the the vision has changed from looking at a gender biasness to competency and when i say about competency you know the women are more competent than men if you name all the all the requirements of uh, of abilities and you evaluate you know the woman will 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 turn out to be a better you know performer into that uh, well if i if i can tell you most of the time in the bravery and the valiantness and the macho thing it's been men who are been looked upon but you know when my mother gave birth to me she experienced the pain as equal to 16 fractures happening in the human body at a time so no male in this room has a capability of of bearing that pain only women can do it so like this is only one example i can prove it on many examples so this has open a, a complete paradigm shift on how we look at you know the 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 situation and i feel that you know the the uh, with the technology and as i told the more and more women are coming up for this positions engineering you see aeronautics you see all the uh, you know, industries you see you will find more and more you know the the women entering into this and with competency they perform well that's really great and hearing this from the other side now i have uh, i have a doubt and a fear that maybe 10 to 15 years down the road we'll be sitting and doing programs for men that please hire us <laughs> exactly very soon men will have to find for fight for gender equality <laughs> true coming to deema okay you are belonging to the education profession so if you can tell us how you have seen men uh, really understanding the importance of 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 this you know uh, standing beside women supporting them uh, giving them chances and all so how do you feel don't you think that they have ego issues or there are any problems because what i can all hear right now until now is all good which is not the case <laughs> Thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity and uh, I I really love this topic first of all the actually the number of men in the room for an event that is specially for women is actually really good <laughs> it's never the case uh, so I really believe it's very important to have uh, men allies uh, of course it's is never going to be the case that everyone agrees or everyone is so supportive so that's why we need to recognize the role of men who are really allies and supportive of women um, i think if you look at back at the at, at why it's important to have uh, men or male allies uh, first of all uh, if we look at the corporate uh, environment um a lot of the re leadership are male so this is something you know you cannot ignore uh, secondly in our part of the world you know the family is important so you have uh, your father's uh, it needs to be an ally like sheikha mentioned for example how her father encouraged her your brother your husband actually or your partner this person need to share the responsibility unless you have a similar responsibility around the house it's not going to be able you know the woman is not going to be able to you know take all of these responsibility compete outside uh, in the corporate world which is not easy stuff and at home and uh, back to the corporate 
I think it's not only, you know, why it's important. I know we all established that it's very important and women can do it, but it's going to be way more challenging if you don't really have male allies. Um, how they can do it, I think um, it's not enough for us to talk about it. It's not enough for men to say that we really, you know, uh, support women's rights. We want women we, to advance in the, in the um, you know, world of work. It's not enough. Um, the role actually need to be really proactive. Uh, they need to uh, be uh, deliberate in everything that they do. Uh, for example, uh, one of the things that men can do to support women, especially in the work environment, they need to connect with women. First of all, identify a talent, support their talent, and connect with the women, and then help them do the outreach. For example, if, if I know a talented young woman as a man, I can connect her with my network. I can you know, connect her with the people that I know that will help her, def help her definitely um, get opportunities. Uh, secondly, being a mentor, you know, sharing the experience, sharing the knowledge is something that men definitely can do and that will definitely help women. And finally, the empowerment. So it's very important, again, to give women uh, the opportunity uh, for leadership positions, for management position, positions. And sometimes this decision actually is in the hand of a man. So if that man is not an ally, if that man is not someone who believes in the ability of women to deliver the same quality of work, the same quality of leadership. It's going to be really difficult for women to actually make it. Um, so that's how important it is. And this is the uh, conscious role that men can play, especially in corporates, to empower women. From my personal experience, I, I remember when I first actually got my first managerial position and I love what you talked about because you know I was so tiny as well and you know none of the clients actually when they got into the office believed that I was the manager because a I was the woman b I was the tiniest person and the and probably the youngest in age and I had like 20 people working for me and the clients at the beginning they'd be like you know please you know go get the manager I'm, I'm the manager <laughs> and they'll be surprised so, for example, for that position, uh, I had to interview in front of a panel of maybe four or five men. And I'd, I had one ally among these five men. Uh, the rest of them said no. And I know for sure that they said no. And the reason was not because I'm not qualified, I was the best, but because they thought that this is a tough job for me. So in their head, they were thinking, you know, we're helping this poor young woman, you know, this is going to be a tough job. And I had one ally who said, no, she can do it and she will do it. And that ally actually gave me the job that made my career. And that's how important it is, you know, for men to be allies for women. Thank you very much. Um, I can just conclude that men and women, they don't compete with each other. They complete each other. Thank you very much for your time.